Welcome back to Tony Strong Life Coach. I'm Tony Strong, of course, and uh, I'm here to help you to become the best version of you. Okay, this is one of my uh, one of my sayings here. One of the I mean, write this down uh, because this is what this is what I, I'd like you to become. I'd like you to become the best version, not just the it'll do version of oh, you know, we're just muddling through version, but the absolute best. Try and help you with that journey. Uh, today, what I've done is I've got a, a, a selection here of, of emails from you asking uh, specific, specifically, I can't say that word, <laughs> that's something I've got to work on to become the best version of myself is to be able to say the word specifically. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Specifically, uh, that have been sent to me asking for help regarding uh, various problems and issues that people are actually currently struggling with. Here we go. I'm obviously not going to give the surname away here because I don't want these people to be identified. <laughs> <laughs> here on my program but I'll just give the I'll just give the uh, Christian names of these people so dear Tony um, I'm a 45 year old accountant and I feel like I'm stuck in a rut my work bores me my home life bores me and in many ways I feel that life is just one big disappointment Tony can you suggest some ways in which I can reconnect with the world and feel alive again that's a classic midlife crisis, isn't it? We're talking about here. 45 year old accountant. Uh, this is uh, Graham Todd's. Sorry, sorry, Graham. This is Graham. He wants to know if there are some ways in which he can really, you know, get a bit of joie de vivre back, a bit of passion, and, you know, and to become, to become the best version of Graham Todd's. Sorry, Graham. You've got to make some big changes in your life, Graham. You've got to turn things around big styly on this um, so let's just go through your day you jump in your car and you, you drive off to work and what I suggest is don't just park in your normal parking space I want you to to drive in there to the car park look around and and see if there's another space that you could park in maybe right over in the corner the sort of place you don't normally go to so do that and also whichever way you drive in just drive in the opposite way. So if you park, if you go in and you drive in uh, and you park, you know, front ways, then instead of doing that, manoeuvre your car so you, you go in backwards. So when you finish work, instead of having to reverse out, um, you just drive straight off. When you get to your desk, Graham, in your accountant's firm, what I want you to do, I want you to look around at that desk and I, and I want you to think, well, Maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll mix things up here too. Maybe um, I'll take the phone here and I'll move it over here. And maybe what I'll do is that I'll rearrange my screen. So the screen now is like there rather than there, or I can make it higher or, or tilt it. Just, you know, maybe a, a small change, just tilt it in a slightly different way to the, to the way you normally have it. When you have a break and you go off for, uh, you know, a, a, a beverage, a hot beverage of some sort, don't you know, mix them up too. Don't just have a tea. I mean, if, if you have tea, don't have tea, have coffee. And if you have coffee, have tea or, you know, or bovril. And honestly, if you just start to do that on those smaller things, then basically I reckon you can completely get a bit more, you know, you can get a bit more zip and sort of just excitement just passion back into your life. You're mixing up the palette of your life so that everything will be fresh, fresh and new. And hopefully, Graham, that's gonna make your life fresh and new too. Okay, we've got another one here. Uh, Dear Tony, I have been happily married for 20 years. Oh, that's good. And enjoy my work as a chef in a busy restaurant. However, yes, always a, always a however. In the last couple of years, I have been questioning my sexuality and wondering if I should transition and become a woman. Can you help? Well, this is very of the moment, isn't it? Uh, there's been a lot of lot of talk, a uh, um, bit of a shift here in terms of, you know, our understanding of uh, gender, you know, uh, gender fluidity, uh, LGBTs, LGB, L, you know, the LGBTs, what was it? LGTs. Yeah, you know, the whole spectrum, that whole spectrum of, of all those uh, people. Obviously, I looked at this question beforehand and um, what I've decided to do to help Bob and people like Bob is to, is I've come up with the uh, Tony Strong sexual orientation test. I think there are 
easy questions that you can ask yourself, Bob, and people like Bob, uh, to see whether you are um, want to stay as a man or be a woman. So, Bob, and the first subject here is books. Do you prefer a Christmas romances? Okay, Christmas romances, for example, and I've got an example here, Snowy Nights at the Lonely Hearts Hotel by Karen King. Okay, or B, the SAS Survival Handbook. Moving on, music. Um, do you prefer Bob? Uh, a, um, the song We've Only Just Begun from the album Close to You by the Carpenters. Or B, Devoured by Vermin from the album Vile by Cannibal Corpse. Okay, um, Cannibal Corpse, of course, are a, a death metal outfit. Um, moving on to sport now, Bob. Uh, so, um, do you prefer A, netball, or B, bare knuckle boxing? And uh, finally, uh, films. Films. Uh, uh, do you like A, Mamma Mia? That can be either the original Mamma Mia, I think, or the sequel, doesn't really matter. Uh, or B, Die Hard. If Bob, and people like Bob, if your answers were predominantly A, then uh, you are probably are a woman or you want to be a woman. Uh, so Bob, in your circumstances, if you answered A to, to, to that test for all of those answers, then I would say yes, do transition because yeah, you, you, you're a woman. Pretty much. I mean, yeah, you're, you've got a woman thing there. Um, if it was B, then I'd, I'd, Bob or people like Bob, I'd stay, I'd stay being a man. But of course, if you're a woman taking this, uh, then, you know, this can also work because obviously if you've chosen Bs predominantly, then, then maybe you should think about transitioning to becoming a, a man. Dear Tony, I'm a 35-year-old housewife with two young children and I'm thinking of leaving my partner of 10 years and running off with a hang on and running off with the man who installed our ensuite bathroom. I'm scared about what damage this might cause my children and wonder if I'm letting my heart rule my head. And that's from that's from Liz. Uh, she's probably a bit bored, housewife at home, is a bathroom installer, comes there, they get chatting, cup of tea, biscuit, before you know it, sparks are flying, um, and, uh, you know, she's obviously fallen for him, but she's got, got two young kids, hasn't she, so, and, uh, yeah, she, understandably why, it's understandable why she, she's worried about them, because if she just leaves her husband and goes off, then what's going with the kids, um, and that question, should you let, let your heart rule your head in those situations well Liz um, what I think you should do is I think you should just go with your go with your heart on this just you know life is too short you know and you're 35 and you're not getting any younger and and you're worried there about the kids well do you know something I'm, kids are, are resilient well they used to be resilient but these days I mean you know with the whole snowflake generation and everything I'm not so sure so you know, I, I think the best way to look at it, look at this is if you go now, even though they're young, um, that will that will help them with their resilience. That that will make them less snowflakey. OK, um, that will toughen them up. And and, you know, in the future, I, I, I think it's a really good. There's a good chance that the kids will, will turn around, you know, and they'll say to you, they'll say to you, look, you know, mum, when I was seven or eight and you went off, I, you know, I was I was a little bit upset, obviously. Um, but do you know something? You really strengthened me as a, as a person. So thanks, Mum. Thanks for leaving me there, Mum. That was brilliant. I'm sure they'll they'll say that. I'm sure they'll say that. So uh, yeah, let's go for it. Just go off with the ensuite, man. Uh, dear Tony, I work for the local council in a very junior role and have suffered from bullying since starting this job two years ago. Well, that's very sad. It's, mm. Bullying. Can you teach me how to stand up for myself as I feel that it is deeply affecting my self-esteem? Well, it, and that's John there, John aged 22. It's not something I, I had a problem with myself because um, from quite an early age I was able to project this, this aura 
of uh, confidence and that so if there were any bullies around anybody who wants to take advantage of me in that sort of sense they they pretty much kind of picked up on this it was like a force field around me a big force field around me of just you know confidence and they'd be kind of pushed away by it because they think well you know i can't take on young tony obviously you know he phew, no so so really john to become the best version of you i you know you've really got to you've got to build up you've got to build up this confidence that you are sadly lacking you've got to build up this buffer zone between you and, and the world i mean and really i i think there's no there's no two, way, two ways about it you've got to man up you know get a grip or just flounce out just give up just you know fall over just you know if you're gonna just be bullied then then you just go the whole hog just cry just lie on the floor and go oh no world you know oh no, no one understands but just just go just do that okay do that if, if you're gonna give up but i'm saying don't do that obviously don't do that don't give up i'm saying just you know get some stuff pumping through your your bits give them a, a a tony strong look like this a really strong look and that look says don't push it matey don't or mate or M mrs mate you know wh whoever whoever it is don't this is not i'm not pulling back i'm not going to shrink away and get uh, i'm going to be uh. okay so it's down to you john you know give up die or you know Get some stuff pumping round you. Okay, so here's the last one now here. Uh, Dear Tony, I'm a secondary school teacher with young children, but also an elderly parent and my mother to look after. Okay, um, I get on well enough with my mother, but it is now getting to the point where she needs extra assistance. Should I encourage her to go into a home or should she come and live with us? I am worried that even though I love her dearly, living with us might be problematic and that's uh, jessica there well jessica that's uh, certainly something that affects a lot of people these days um that whole pressure of you know you've got a young youngish family but also one of your parents is um is getting old uh, maybe it's got uh, dementia of some degree uh, possibly you know there might only be one parent left and then the pressure really is upon you to um to look after that parent which is you know can be a bit of a burden can be a bit uh, you know a bit demanding what you've got to say to yourself is what is best for you um you know a lot of people think well you know what's you know what's best for the parent but to be honest with you you know your mum's been around for a long time you know she's had she's had a good old life to be fair you know and uh, she's at the kind of fag end of it all and um it's not really about her so much anymore um it's it's about what what you need um, you know and what, what your kids need and and reading between the lines I don't think really you or your kids really want to have you know an elderly parent knocking around the house you know probably with dementia if she hasn't got dementia now then you know she, she will do soon won't she because because they all do eventually don't they so to me there's, there's there's no doubt about it Jessica I think what you really just what you need to do is just get her put in a home as soon as really just get her put in a home and um, I'm not don't feel guilty about that either, honestly, because you know your mum. I'm sure your mum doesn't want to feel a burden. She, you know, old people don't like don't like to feel a burden. They think it's best that they get sort of you know just put down the road somewhere, uh, and she'll be fine. Um, the only other thing I would say is, uh, Jessica, don't don't let your mum spend all her, um, her her money on the on the home. I mean, there are quite a lot of homes around these days which charge a lot of money, and you don't have to go for the most expensive home. And think about you know having some of that inheritance um for, you know for for later when your mum has moved on you know as it were have a good look around for a sort of probably a medium a medium to medium to low kind of uh costing um elderly home for her don't don't spend all the money on you know on on expensive care because you know as i say she she won't I, she won't even notice it to be honest as long as she's got a telly you know and some old friends of hers to chat to she she won't notice she'll, she'll be fine i hope that um my surgery today strong surgery has been of, of help for not just obviously the people i've been dealing with here with the emails but obviously with people out with you uh, out there i want i want all of you just to go out 
and to try and be the best you that you can, the best version of you. It's about your unique you-ness. Put your you-ness out there into the world. You embrace it, you, you put it in that cup, the cup of you-ness, and you, and you spread the you-ness all around. <laughs>